Hi friends! Welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. In today's video I'm going to be talking about my reading stats for quarter three and my favorite books that I read in quarter three of 2022. Y'all know I'm a stats nerd and I like to do these quarterly updates. I almost forgot about this one until I saw Mara's quarter three update and I was like, oh no, in all the busyness of October, I almost forgot that I needed to do this video. But have no fear, I have prepared a full slate of statistics for your viewing pleasure, those of you who are as nerdy about this as I am. And I'm also going to talk about some of my favorite books that I read in the third quarter of 2022. So we're covering July, August, and September. I always get questions on these videos about how I make my stats, how I make my graphs. I use Google Sheets to make these graphs and the spreadsheet that I use is a modified version of Brock's. I will link him down below if you want to go and check it out. He does a really amazing reading spreadsheet every year and I kind of modify it to fit what I want from it and then I use that to make my statistics graphs. So let's talk about where we're landing at the end of quarter three. As of the end of September, I was at 300 books read for the year. My official reading goal was 200 books, but I knew I would easily hit that, so I'm not surprised to see it go past it. Will I hit 400 by the end of the year? Possibly. Currently, I seem to be on track for that if I was reading about 100 books per quarter, although I think I may have read a little bit more earlier in the year. I currently seem to be on track for that, although it's possible that my reading could take a bit of a dip in the last quarter of the year just because things are so busy and I've got other projects and a new channel and everything. So we'll see. It's not a thing that I feel the need to do, but if I hit it, it's always kind of fun. In quarter three, I read a total of 97 books. This includes 22 physical books, 20 ebooks, and 55 audio books. So that does mean that more than half of my reading this quarter was audiobooks. If you're wondering how I do so much reading, this is part of it. Audiobooks are a huge help. I always have several books going at a time in different formats and genres, and that definitely makes a difference. In Q3, I only had three rereads, so not as many as some previous quarters, and I only had five DNFs or books I chose not to finish not that many. Taking a look at page count for this quarter, I read 29,965 pages for an average of 326 pages per day. I think this is a little bit down from Q2, which again, I'm kind of okay with. I don't feel like I need to read as much as I do sometimes. The shortest work that I read during this period was 21 pages, and the longest book was 725 pages. The average page length of a book was 309 pages. So on average, I was reading things around 300 pages long, probably because I had some novellas and then of course some longer books. This quarter, 75% of the books that I read were novels, 12% were novellas, and the rest were broken up into other categories such as anthologies, short stories, graphic novels, etc. And in terms of genre, perhaps unsurprisingly, the bulk of my reading was in my favorite genre that I read the most from. I read 30.9% fantasy books, 19.6% romance, and on the graph you'll see that broken up into contemporary speculative and historical romance, 12.4% science fiction, and 9.3% horror. Horror was a, a higher number in this quarter, and all of that put together is 72.2% of my reading, with the rest of my reading being scattered amongst other genres that I don't read quite as much from. I think fantasy is always my most read genre, and that did continue to be the case this quarter. In terms of age categories, this is looking very similar to the rest of the year. 77% of them were targeted at an adult audience, 17.5% were for YA audiences and only 5% were either middle grade or children's books. Again, that seems fairly typical of what this year has looked like. 56.7% of the books that I read were advanced reader copies or books that were sent to me for review. I do heavily read for review. This has kind of been my full-time job and so a, a good chunk of my reading, a little more than half, is for review and that means that I'm also reading pretty heavily front list or newer books. And in fact in this quarter 62% of the books that I read were published in 2022. A 
lot of the books I'm reading are new books, again, because I am reviewing. 31% are backlist, and the earliest book that I read in this quarter was from 1928. Next, let's take a look at where the books that I was reading were coming from. I think it's interesting sometimes to take a look at the publishers I'm reading from the most, and you can expect at the end of the year, I'll do a whole giant stats roundup for everything I was doing in the year, and that's always fun. But for this quarter, my most read publisher was Penguin Random House. And you know, as we know, they have a majority share of the market. But what's interesting is I read 27% books from Penguin Random House and 26% from Macmillan. So even though Penguin Random House by far has the biggest share of the book market, I am reading almost as much from Macmillan. And this is probably because, as many of you know, some of my favorite imprints are from Macmillan. Tor and Tor.com are Macmillan imprints, and so that is definitely bulking that up for me. And then 16.5% of the books that I read this quarter were either from indie authors, self-published authors, or from small presses, which is pretty great. I think for next year I might, in my spreadsheet, separate out independent authors versus authors publishing in a small press because I think that might be some useful distinction to have since I have been reading so much more of it but either way I'm pretty happy with that number. So overall 71.2 percent of my reading this quarter was from The Big Five which is Penguin Random House, Macmillan, Simon & Schuster, Hachette, and HarperCollins. Uh, so 71.2 pretty decent amount coming from small presses, indie authors, and some of the other publishers that are not part of the big five, which I'm pleased with. Next up, let's take a look at author identity. If you watch my channel, you know from my end of month wrap ups that my goal every month is to read about 50% from black, indigenous, or person of color authors, and at least 25% from queer authors. So let's see how I did overall for the quarter. I've got to say, I did think I did a pretty good job with this. 51.5% of the books that I read in quarter three were by Black, Indigenous, or person of color authors. So I am right around what I'm aiming for. And then 36.1% are by known LGBT authors. Again, really pleased with that. I also wanted to take a look at how many authors I was reading were from Western countries. I do record the country of origin for the author, so where they were born, not necessarily where they currently live. I've had some questions about that. 71% of the books that I read this quarter were from American authors, and 14.5% were by authors from non-Western countries. So that means not from like the US, the UK, Canada, Australia, etc. Which is not too bad. In terms of author gender, 70.1% of the books that I read were by female authors. This is unsurprising. I always read heavily female authors and I'm not upset about that. 20.6% of the books that I read are by male authors and 8.2% were by non-binary or agender authors, which I'm really pleased with. I've seen that number slowly creep up and I feel like this year I've been reading more than ever. We've gone from having that number be like two to 3% to getting to 8%. I'm I'm very pleased to see that. 8.2% of the books that I read were by trans authors this quarter, 9.3% were by disabled authors, at least where I know that they are disabled, 12.4% were by neurodiverse authors, 18.6% were by debut authors, and I feel like that's a pretty reasonable number, and 42.3% of the books that I read were from new to me authors. So I think that's interesting. A little more than half of my reading is from authors that I already know and love, I'm familiar with, I know that I'm going to like their work, and then a little more than 40% of my reading was from new authors that I'm trying out for the first time. Again, I feel pretty comfortable with those numbers as somebody who does reviewing actively. I want to make sure that I'm continuing to read from the authors that I know that I like, that I have had good experiences with in the past, but I also want to open it up to read from new authors. Authors, and I think I'm doing a pretty good job with that. Last statistic thing before we get into the specific books and authors that I read this quarter is we're going to take a look at the star rating breakdown. I didn't do percentages on this, we're just going to look at the raw numbers, but I do think this is interesting. This quarter I did not give any books one star, which is great because early in the year I had quite a few that got one star, uh, but I didn't have any one stars. I did have two books got one and a half stars, eight books got two stars, two books got two and a half stars, 
nine books got three stars, 17 books got three and a half stars, 30 books got four stars, 11 books got four and a half stars, 15 books got five stars, and three books got six stars, which is what I give to a favorite of the year in my personal rating scale. I do think it's interesting that this quarter has been my lowest in terms of new favorites of the year, although I do have quite a solid number of honorable mentions. So I don't know if it's like I hit a point in the year where I start getting more stingy with the six stars. I think that is possible. Maybe early in the year I'm more excited. I don't know. Maybe that's not true, but um, I always wonder a little bit because I, it seems to fall off sometimes at some point. This is not super unusual for me. I do feel like I've given out more two stars this year than I have in previous years. I, I'm not sure what to think about that, but four stars is usually my most given rating and certainly that was the case for this quarter. Next, I want to look at my most read authors for the quarter. This is authors that I read more than one book from. I always think this is kind of fun list to look at. And then we're going to take a look at my favorite books that I read this quarter. This will include my three six star reads and some honorable mentions that I want to point out. So in this quarter, I had six authors that I read two books from, which is pretty interesting, and then four authors that I read three books from. I feel like this is more than usual repeat authors. Some of these are unsurprising. They're because I'm doing read-alongs for these authors, but I didn't realize how many there were going to be. So for authors that this quarter I have read two books from in those three months, I've got Jen Lyons. This is because I'm reading her entire series. So that one's not super surprising. John Scalzi, Kristen Kishore. This one is for a read-along I'm doing. Nevo, who I love, Sarah McLean, and Stephen Graham Jones. I feel like that's a pretty good list of authors. And then the four authors that I've read three books from in this quarter are Erica Ridley, Joe Abercrombie for a read along, Sylvia Moreno Garcia, because I wanted to get through more of her backlist before doing a reader's guide to her, and Terry Goodkind, who is also for a read along. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. With that said, let's talk about my favorite books that I read in quarter three. I mentioned that three books got a six star rating from me. Those books are Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. I really loved this. This was a gorgeous nonfiction book that I have a vlog for actually. I will link it up above if you want to check it out where I read one to two entries per day and reflected on them. This is beautiful. It's almost got a devotional vibe to it. It's written by an indigenous author and it's about plants and nature and humans relationship to the earth and I, I think it's amazing. It's one that I will definitely revisit again in the future. I also gave six stars to Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake. This is a sapphic contemporary romance and I just loved it so much. Definitely one of my favorite romances that I read this year. I really loved all of the themes. I loved the characters. I was rooting for the relationship and I can't wait to read the next book in this series. I think it's going to be awesome if this was any indication. And my final book that got six stars in the third quarter of 2022 is Confessions of an Alleged Good Girl by Joya Goffney. This is one of only a couple of YA titles that has made my favorites list this year. There have been a lot fewer YA books that have made that much of an impact, but this this was one that I really loved. I read it because I had heard Ashley from Bookish Realm talking about it, and it is one that I would definitely recommend for anybody who grew up in purity culture, who is actively deconstructing from things like evangelical Christianity. I think that this has a lot to say about uh, the importance of comprehensive sex education, of religious trauma, of purity culture, and uh, some other stuff. I've talked about this at length in other places, but I really loved this book, and it was for sure one that left a strong impact on me. I also want to shout out a few honorable mentions. These are books that I, I didn't quite give a favorite of the year rating, but they were close or they were under consideration or they're ones that I just really loved for one reason or another and I wanted to mention them. The first one is The Sunbearer Trials by Aidan Thomas. This is definitely one of the best YA books that I have read this year. I think Aidan Thomas's writing just keeps getting better. This was so much fun, had great action, great character 
character work, great thematic content, dealt with some deeper themes, but was also just a really, really good time and was written for teenagers. You know, you don't always get YA where I'm like, this very much feels written for teenagers, but The Sunbearer Trials is one of those, and it was just excellently put together. I also really loved The Holiday Trap by Roan Parrish. This makes me think I need to read more of her books because this was delightful. The conceit of this is it's basically like the holiday, but make it queer. And I, I just really loved this. I loved both of the relationships that we got with the house swap. I really loved the way that this dealt with a lot of difficult topics like grief and difficult family relationships. It was just an easy five star read for me and one that makes me want to go and read more books by Rowan Parrish. Another really fantastic YA book that I read this year is These Fleeting Shadows by Kate Alice Marshall. This is a YA gothic horror novel and I think it is fantastic. It's been compared to Knives Out which I don't actually think is a good comparison because it's not humorous. I think people go into a book comped to Knives Out and expect it to be a comedy and this is definitely not a comedy. It's a fairly dark and gruesome at times and I think the only real connection to something like Knives Out is the fact that it involves a contested inheritance and an estate but other than that I, I just don't think that's a great comparison. I think The Haunting of Hill House is maybe a better comparison to this which it's also been comped to but I really love this another one I gave five stars to and was a fan of. Then I have to mention I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. I think this is one of the best celebrity memoirs I've ever read and I picked it up because I heard so much buzz about it. I was a little too old for iCarly which is what Jeanette McCurdy is known for but it's got a very interesting title and I think it really delivers. Big content warnings for this though it deals with some really rough content but I thought it was fantastically done. She narrates the audiobook herself and I listened into it that way and I would recommend if you're into audiobooks at all. It's essentially her memoir of what it was like to grow up with an abusive and narcissistic mother who pushed her into acting as a child. It does have pretty graphic descriptions of her eating disorder, of addiction and abuse and stuff so just kind of a heads up there but I thought this was fantastic. It was for sure a standout in the quarter. And the final book that I want to recommend here is A Half Built Garden by Ruthanna Emrys. I loved this so much and I have not heard a lot of other people talking about it or if I have it's from people who didn't really click with the project of what this book is which is fair. It's not going to be for everyone. It's a very ideas and character driven sci-fi story. It's quiet, it's slow, but it's also just really, really good. It's a mix of climate fiction and an alien first contact story that has really strong themes of motherhood. It's so smart. The world building is incredible. The way that this thinks about politics and parenting and cultural norms in interacting with alien civilizations is so fascinating. And um, it's great. It's also very queer. The main character is a queer Jewish woman who is living in a polyamorous relationship. I, I just thought this was great. I think a lot of people would like it if they would pick it up. You just kind of need to know what you're getting going in because it's not action packed at all. But if you like a slow burn, I would recommend it. So there you go. Highlights of my third quarter of 2022. And I am well into the final quarter of the year. So you can look forward to all of my fun January videos wrapping up the year. I'll do a giant stats extravaganza video for the entire year come January. But in the meantime, hopefully this was interesting and fun and gave you some books to go and check out if you missed any of my wrap ups in this time and want kind of the highlights section of the best things that I think I read. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for question of the day, tell me what was your favorite book that you read in Q3? What's the, the best thing that you picked up? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, as always, it helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.